Welcome back to the channel folks, my name is Michelle, this is a drone and I'm going to talk to you about how you can become a drone surveyor. So having been an engineer for the last 17 years, I made the transition around about three or four years ago to move into drone surveying and quite honestly I haven't looked back. But in this video today I want to share with you everything that you're going to need to be able to start up as a drone surveyor. We're going to talk about drones, software, licenses, training, you name it, everything you need to get your business started. I highly recommend you stick around to the end of the video where I share my top tips on how I made the transition into drone surveying and how I grew my business. But for now, let's get started. Number one, you're going to need a drone. Now, there are a ton of drones out there on the market right now. My weapon of choice is this DJI Phantom 4 RTK. I've been flying the Phantom RTK for just over four years now, and it has never failed me. I think it's an excellent piece of kit. I had already been introduced to DJI equipment before and was highly impressed with their drones. There are other drone manufacturers out there. However, I can't give you an opinion on them because I've only ever used DJI products. And like I say, they have never failed me before. However, one of the key decisions for you is going to be which drone you purchase. This took me a lot of research and a lot of worrying before I actually spent my hard-earned cash. However, drone technology has moved on and you can now pick up a newer model of this drone as well as a new RTK drone in the Mavic range, which is cheaper, more compact and, well, it looks the bomb to be fair. The key decision I had to make when choosing a drone was whether to go with RTK, which obviously has GPS right here in the top of the head unit, or whether to do a standalone drone with photogrammetry and then just tie everything in with GCPs. Now, I was a little bit confused with how accurate just purely GCPs were and decided, to be honest with you, to go the RTK route. From a surveying background, accuracy for me is paramount. And I just don't think you can go wrong with the RTK. You do have to put GCPs, ground control points, out still with the RTK, but it is going to be connected to the satellites and it is going to be giving you a GPS signal so that your drone knows where it is. And I've just found that surveying and the surveying outputs with an RTK drone are far superior to anything that just a normal drone can do. Plus, if you're starting out as a business and you are already a surveyor, it's worth the investment. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't even consider a drone without RTK. Just based on the market right now, and I am not sponsored by DJI, here's a list of kind of the top three drones that I'd be looking at. You do also need to consider when purchasing a drone, the payload. So depending on the payload will depend on what type of license and what type of accreditation that you will need to fly. This one here is quite a low payload. It's not the big bird. Therefore, you haven't got to do the GVC course. Now we'll come on to courses in due course, but the government is changing the rules all the time. So it's quite hard to keep up to date with exactly what you need to be able to commercially fly a drone for surveying purposes. Now that you've got your drone, you're probably looking at like an entry level drone to get yourself started. You're gonna be looking to spend between five and 7,000 pound. And that's gonna include your box, your batteries, and everything that you need to get up and running. But the costs won't stop there. So you have an RTK drone, the next thing that you're gonna need is connection. So you're gonna need a GPS license. Now you may already have one, I actually did because I was already using a GPS for normal traditional surveying. So you can actually use both for the drone and your kit, but if you don't, fear not. There are many companies out there offering licenses for a day, a week, a month, six months. And this is really good because as a drone surveyor, you're not always going to be out with the drone. Therefore, you may just wanna pay for a license as and when you need it for a job. I can recommend PQS Tech for all your RTK requirements. If you head on over to their website, you can see all the licenses that are available and pick and choose exactly what you're going to need to get started. They are the sponsors of this video. Okay, you have your drone, you have your RTK license. The next thing that you're gonna need is accreditation. Now for these mid-entry drones, you're gonna be looking at the A, C of C course and potentially the GVC, depending on where it is you're gonna to need to fly commercially. This is obviously just for the UK. If you're based anywhere else in the world, please do check your aviation laws and ensure you have the right accreditation for where it is that you need to fly. There are some amazing companies up and down the UK who are offering these accreditations in-house. What that means is you go to them and you learn to fly your drone properly. And then at the end of the training, you will take the test and hopefully walk away with the accreditation that you need. I can highly recommend this because if you just sign up to do the course online, it means you've got to spend the time flying and find somewhere local that you're allowed to fly to get your practice in. And you're gonna need two hours. And then it comes down to actually booking the test and going going through with it. I just find that if you set time aside to do a course and then the accreditation at the end, 
that's done, ticked off the list, and then you're good to go flying. Plus you get to answer a bunch of questions to the training providers and get any kind of extra help that you need. So you've now got your drone, you're accredited, and you've got your GPS license. You are almost ready to go. This is the one thing that most people forget about, but I think it is so paramount, and that is you need insurance. Yes, this is one thing that most people forget about, but insurance for flying a drone is really important. Even if you're flying on a site and not over the general public, you still need insurance. That drone could come down, Yes, I have had that happen to me. Your insurance not only wants to protect your drone and your equipment, but it also wants to protect the public. Yes, accidents can happen. And I think if you're gonna commercially do this as a proper surveying business, then you do need insurance that protects you against public liability. I use Cover Drone for my insurance. I think they're perfect. They have a really flexible system in that you can just insure your drone for a day's flying. You can insure it for five days a week, like the RTK license. It's super flexible and I would highly recommend them. They've been really helpful to me. You can also insure extra kit through Cover Drone. So if you have a GPS unit that you're taking out to do ground control points, they are gonna be your guys because you can cover that under that insurance too. Okay, now you can get out and fly your drone and get some business. However, when you get back to the office and you've got all your wonderful photographs from your job, the Last thing that is pretty crucial is software. So I have been through my fair share of softwares for processing the drone information and also using the software to automatically plan my routes and fly my drone. Originally, I started off just using the DJI app. And whilst it's good and it does everything you kind of need, I found it really clunky and just wasn't overall impressed with it. Since then, I have been using Drone Deploy and Drone Deploy is amazing. Not only do you use the software to actually plan out and do your flight, but it's also an incredible software to process all your data once you've done your flights. Other softwares that I've tested out have been SightScan by Esri and Pix4D. It's worth exploring. However, I wasn't overly impressed with either of these softwares for various different reasons, but feel free to check them out because they may well work for you. Now you've chosen your software, you need to think about your computer spec. You don't need a super powerful computer, but it depends on the type of software that you're gonna go for. That's another thing that I love about Drone Deploy is that everything is processed in the cloud. So you basically import all your photos, it gets processed in the cloud, and then you can produce point clouds, volumetric surveys, DTMs. It really is something well worth looking into. But if you're going to process on PIX4D and you're gonna have that on your own computer, you will need to make sure that that you have a computer that is capable of processing because the last thing you want to do is come back from a job and then have to sit and wait and wait and quite frankly be unproductive whilst your survey has been processing. Just to add into the mix some of the things that I missed when I started to fly my drone, which I wish I'd known about, and that is don't forget extra batteries, don't forget your accessories, so things like a takeoff pad, cones. Cones are really super useful. You need to be coning off the area in which you're taking off and landing. You will need to be having a phone with you because the phone will need to connect Wi-Fi remotely to your drone to get it up off the ground and connected to the apps. Spare cables, yes. If your cable breaks, then you are screwed. So please ensure you have spare cables for everything. So for example, my drone has a controller that is connected to an iPad via an iPhone cable. I cannot tell you how many times my iPhone cable has just stopped working. And it's so important that you have these in your kit bag to ensure that you are not caught short basically and that you can't carry on with the job. SIM cards, I would highly recommend a scan disc 74 or 124, 25. These memory cards are gonna slip right into the side of your drone and obviously the higher memory, the better it is because the more jobs that you can get in there without having to panic. You can take thousands of photographs and not really worry about running out of space mid drone flight. If you're not a surveyor and you don't have a GPS unit, then I would highly recommend adding this to your kit bag because like I said if you want accurate surveys you cannot just go and fly an RTK drone without GCPs that is a massive downfall to not only your workflow but like I say the accuracy of your surveys so if you have a GPS kit perfect if you don't you can purchase many different types of GPS kits that range from £3,000 right the way up to £20,000 or you can purchase with your drone through DJI or separately a base station and you set that base station up and it would massively increase the accuracy for you. Once you've processed everything, whether that be in PIX4D or drone deploy or site scan, as a surveyor, I think it's really important that you are able to provide a high level of detail for all your surveys. And none of these softwares allow you to go as deep as you need to as a surveyor 
into producing drawings. So you are going to want to export information from the software and put it into something like LSS or AutoCAD. Now LSS is a software that I have used for years. It's fantastic with point clouds and it enables you perfectly to extrapolate information from photogrammetry in a point cloud into a survey which then you can pop into CAD. And I basically only use CAD to kind of tighten up the drawing and put it into a model space and then onto a template for my client. But again, these softwares need to be considered because they come at a cost. Everyone thinks it's super easy to get into drone surveying and actually, it's quite costly. But there you go, I've given you all the options and pretty much hopefully everything that you need to get yourself up and running. If you have any further questions, please go ahead and write them in the description below. I'll do my best to answer them. And finally, here are my top tips for you to progress with your drone surveying and also get started as a drone surveyor in business. Number one, when you get started with your drone surveying, go on LinkedIn and tell everyone about it. Show people what you're doing, show flights, show clients, show workflows, it's gonna be super helpful for people to understand exactly what it is that you're providing and the benefit of drone surveying over traditional surveying. Number two, make sure you have all the information from a client when they want a flight. So for example, there are certain areas that you are not allowed to fly in the UK and you just wanna make sure that every client that comes to you, you have got all the information that you need to locate the area that needs the flight and then ensure that you're not in a no flying area. Number three, pricing, make sure you have a price structure. So many drone surveyors out there underprice drone surveying and then realize actually what goes into the work of getting the final survey and end up out of pocket. So make sure you get your pricing right. You've invested a huge amount of money in the kit, the software, the insurances, make sure your pricing is good. Deliverables, be really clear to the client on what deliverables you're going to be giving them. You may want to give them access to your software so that they can go on and do volume measurements, that they can see their flights. That's really important that you offer that, but it's also important important that you price it correctly because you're going to be paying a month on month fee to host their job and their surveys. So just make sure you include that in your pricing structure. So there you go, you have it, my top tips. And hopefully this video has been super helpful for you to get started and begin in drone surveying. Please go ahead, hit the subscribe and like button, and I'll be back with hopefully some more helpful videos real soon.